everyone, Darren Hunter here. Before we get into our podcast, just want to do a quick shout out for Inspection Manager. What an amazing inspection app platform that they have. And they're really excited at the moment with their tenant assisted routine inspections, where your tenants, in the convenience of their own time frame and in the convenience of their rental property, they can be getting you through the app inspections, um, their own inspection or their own photos that they've done. Now this is going to help you, particularly if you're in lockdown, but what we've also found as businesses have come out of lockdown, um, they've found that perhaps they can do maybe one or even two of these inspections a year aside from scheduling their normal routine inspections. The next step really, go and have a demo, have a look for yourself and make a decision where this could actually work for you too. So go to inspectionmanager.com, request a demo and check it out. Hi everyone, it's Dennis here from Inspired Growth Training and we are here with the BDM Coach Podcast Show. Today, I have got my business partner, Darren Hunter. Darren, I'm really, really excited. So I really thank you for coming on the show because you're talking about my favourite topic, not. <laughs> well, let's get into it. We're talking about time management today for business development managers. And Dennis, you and I have had this informal joke now for years and years yep. and years. And when I get up and I do three hours of teaching property managers time management. I walk out the room. What, what's what's your time management training, Dennis? And you really cover it in one line, don't you? What is that? I do. New business comes, drop everything. And- because it's very spontaneous particularly when you've got a hot lead on the phone because if we just say well sorry you don't fit into our diary at the moment we'll talk to you you know are you available at 2 30 tomorrow well it's too late they've already gone and done a deal because yeah, that, how many meetings have we had and i've had to go sorry darren i've been waiting on this call for, for three days and I, I pull out the meeting and i go get the new business and you and i forever get frustrated on such a thing but there are you know i saw a, an article today um, with a agent in the last 12 months, it was a Ray White agent that did some record of $7 million signed up in commission. Now, mm. it, you know, he was a business owner of that Ray White agency as well. But the fact is, and the fact remains, this was a Sydney agent, um, he would have a very rigid discipline in place around his time management to do something of that level. Yeah. You know, even good salespeople doing over a million dollars a year in commission um, would have a lot of discipline. So if you're a BDM and you're wanting to really ramp up how many deals you do and you want to, let's say you're doing five and you want to go to 10 or you're doing 10 and you want to go to 20, you're at 20, you want to break 30, you're going to have to change the way that you manage your time. And so that's what we're going to cover today in five simple um, keys that are going to help you. So, Dennis, should we get started? Well, yeah, we, we should. It, it's pretty exciting. And the realism of, of, you know, time management for BDMs, it's something that I recognised a couple of years ago. And I actually said to you, we were, I remember where we were, we were walking, we were actually in Missouri, Darren. We are in Missouri, minus 12 degrees, snow to our knees, not quite, but it was snowing. <laughs> it was so cold when it got the minus 12, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. It, were, it was snowing, um, and, and I remember Darren, Michael, and I had done some. Um, we done some a couple of lives into the IGT Inner Circle, and we were talking about um, tasks for BDMs. We did two lives for them, and and just discussed you know tasks and time blocking, and and I remember I then said to you, you you were actually um, you know back at the Airbnb, and I rang you up and said, Darren, we need a time management. Um, session for BDM and you laughed at me I remember you went yeah yeah whatever they don't need time management they're salespeople. they don't know how to manage their time blah 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 and I said that's exactly why we need it (laughs) true true so it's been something that we've been at odds with for years but I guess when I sat down and looked at it you know it was easy to come up with five points that are really going to help so we did a session for the um the grow 100 group we did. Um, program that we're training. I said, Darren, let's get in. We'll do one. We did it off the cuff. We did. And, well, it was got, got a piece of paper out and just wrote mm. down five points and they worked and I'm going to go through them again now. Yep. But they loved it. 
The, yep. the, the feedback was great. They loved it. And, uh, and we, we just both went, okay, let's do a podcast on it now. You know, it was a very good session. So, yeah. you know, if you want to be a high performing BDM, which is really a salesperson, um, you need to be very careful of your time and understand that time is the scarcest resource that you have. Mm. It's more scarce than money. You're going to get paid again next week, next month or whenever, but the time that you've spent today, you'll never, ever get back again. So you've got to treat time with an absolute sense of urgency. Also, the word time management's a bad one because you can't actually manage time. The clock will tick with or without you. So it really comes down to efficient task management and how you effectively and efficiently do those tasks within the time that you've got allotted for today, this week, this month, and so forth. So that's yeah. really what time management is. It's actually task management. Darren, very good point on that. Now, in that, it's, it's very rare that you hear a BDM saying, sorry, my one hour's up, I've got to go now, I can't stay for the rest of the appointment, thinking that's an appraisal, right? But if it's a property manager on a routine inspection and their time's up, bang, they're out of there. That's a, probably a really good example of time management for sales and, and then property managers. Correct, correct. So it is different. It's a different mindset. And with that in mind, that's why, you know, I needed some time to work out these five steps, which I think are good. So step one is we need to identify and sort our tasks into two bundles, two batches, high dollar productive, high value tasks that will definitely bring in the dollars and the low value mundane swamp work that you just have to do, which is like a ball and chain that comes with a position, which is usually paperwork or entering into a system or whatever. So Dennis, let's just quickly go through that. For yep. a BDM, what are some of the high value dollar productive, um, you know, business generating big rock tasks that would go into that first category? What are, what are some of those typical ones? Okay, so if, if we're going to talk about, um, let's say, top five prospecting right the top five so um one example is information nights investor evenings another one is you've got to add social media to that. your online presence that could be linkedin facebook instagram that could be tiktok it could even be um google like your reviews another one is calling your current clients then you've got your strategic alliance meetings bni's or one-on-ones and then your sales people as well so there's, there's a, a few examples for you. Uh, and let's not forget about those investor leads, those ones that are inquiring on, on rental properties that are for sale or properties that could be ideal for rental properties. I, I think there's something in common with all that stuff. This is all face-to-face -face talking, communication. Yep. Connect. This is all connecting tasks by the sounds of it. Yeah. These are all the things that connecting with people, of course, builds trust and turns into business. So, um, you know, uh, what are some low value, um, low productive swamp work type things that BDMs have to do, but it's like a ball and chain that could go into that other category? Okay, well, you could creating flyers. So creating flyers for letterbox drops, you know, creating um, your, your listing kit presentations you know, like uh, before you go to a presentation, whether it's an electronic version or, or what so, um, creating memes for social media, so doing the legwork, um, doing videos, getting the, the idea ready for videos for prospecting. What you about know, for you. entry with management agreements and that sort of thing? Yeah, Just or any form of um, paperwork that's involved, if, yeah. you know, um, in getting the agreement um so, you know writing letters thank you notes um for an appointment that you went to sending off gifts to, to clients or whatever as well um walking the streets letterbox drops walking the streets for business owners meeting people um as well yep. um and also going to root you know still going to the odd routine inspection going to um private owners as well you know so i mean i could keep rattling on so many different things yeah, so with this here, with this low value, we've got to keep in mind that they will also be pushed into two groups as well. Stuff that only you can do, that have to be done, that remain your ball and chain around your leg that you, you have to do. And there's going to be ones that you can easily delegate as well. So keep that in mind. We'll be covering that point off 
as, as we come up. Now, the next point that I've got here, we talked about, okay, identifying those uh, high value dollar productive tasks, because that's what we're going to be spending the most time doing. Because if we spend the most time doing that, of course, those activities are going to fill our pipeline um, and stoke the pipeline and really build that. And the more pipeline we're going to build, the more pressure occurs in that and the more deals are going to fall out that other end. That's what the BDM life cycle is when it comes to uh, prospecting a new business. So moving on. So what we need to understand next is with those low value, um, you know, non-dollar productive tasks, the grind work, uh, we need to practice something which I call productive procrastination is that every task, whether it's little or big, if it's not done, has a consequence to it, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't even be in your lap. But productive procrastination is saying, okay, I've identified low value, low dollar. I am going to, for the sake of just getting my high stuff done, I'm going to decide which ones I'm deliberately going to neglect and push mm. aside and not do. But that's that's it's quite interesting. It, it, it's you know whenever I get business owners that ring me up and they want to start focusing on growth again, Darren, you know, um, and I tell them, okay, well, let's say they take up an option of in-office training. They say, well, what are we going to go through? And I said, I'm going to go through the things that you did when you first started your business. And they say, what's that? I say, well, door knocking and letterbox dropping is an example. And that's that's one of the procrastinating low level things that that people. It's the first to go, right? Once the business starts to pick up, they, they forget about that prospecting side anymore. But what's interesting, it worked when they first started, but but it's the first to go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a good example of that that um, procrastination that you're talking about. But we've got to be very careful to only procrastinate on the stuff that's the grind work that's very, very low value, all right? Yeah. Because we are sacrificing that and neglecting that for the stuff that's going to generate dollars, mm. all right, and know what they are and put all of our time, love, focus, resource, adoration into those things to the neglect of other things, but knowing deliberately what we are neglecting and don't neglect stuff that you haven't planned to neglect. All right, next is blocking out times and days for high production. Now, for example, right now, Dennis, I'm in uh, writing a book, uh, which is the PM Fee Scripts. And um, we hope to release that soon. But I know that I'm trying to do bits and pieces around my other work. And I know it's not working. Mm. I need to have blocks of time, solid blocks where I can just focus only on the book. You talked before, Dennis. What were some of the issues when you, you were writing your book, The PM Lead Secrets? What were some of the issues that you had when you were working on that? Well, you get busy, you get bombarded with calls, emails, texts and stuff and, and things get in the way. You may block an hour to do the book, but what, what basically happens with something like a book and prospecting is the same. You've got to get back into that grind. It takes a bit of rhythm that, that occurs and you may read the chapter you've just completed prior to it to get back into that same vibe, same field, and uh, same flow, sorry, and then all of a sudden half your time's gone and then you start getting into it and your time's up. So, uh, you know, and then you, the distractions uh, come into place on top of that Correct. as well. So it's one hour is very difficult when you're writing a book. So we call it task transition. It's a, it's, it's, a, mm. it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a psychological factor that when you change focus from one task to another, there is a transition time for your mind to get familiar to then start the buildup and now you're productive. And you want to reduce the amount of task transition that you do. So um, in property management, the worst thing a property manager can do is just go and do a repair tasks and suddenly go over and do some rentaries, then go do a couple of phone calls uh, and then swing off to uh, processing an application. And each one of those tasks, because it requires a different type of skill and thinking, has a task transition time. If we're doing all these changes all the time, all of these task transition times build, builds up to possibly an hour, an hour and a half in a day. So if we can just focus and have all of our high dollar productive 
tasks like prospecting or whatever we need to do in one bunch of several hours at a time, then we're going to be able to get so much more done at a fast, effective pace during that time period where we're um, minimal effect by the task transition time. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah, it really does. That you, you forget about a transition, don't you? You don't think that. Time you transition. Know. It, it's very similar mm. this in a way. I remember, and it's, I don't know whether it's a bad analogy, and this is just something that comes to mind. There's a really good movie I'm sure you've seen with Tom Hanks, and it was Scully. Um, mm. And it was all about the, uh, the air crash where he took off from New York airport very quickly as they took off, the plane hit um, Canadian geese, um, a flock of Canadian geese, a very rare event, knocked out the engines immediately, knocked out all power. And these guys have never been trained or have got a procedure for it. And it took them something like 43 seconds or 35 seconds of stall and thinking and human solving, trying to before they're able to then, okay, this is what we're going to do. And by that time, they'd run out of time and they had to land in the Hudson River. Mm. So mm. there is that 43 seconds of, you know, for us, it's our task transition that we takes mind focus to go from one task to another. We can't just get flying in the first second. So yep. we've got to be careful about task transition to minimize that. So that's what we should do. Property managers or applications in one hit in one big bunch. So you've got minimal task transition, doing all your arrears in one big bunch and not just mm. bits and pieces. So it works for property managers. It works for uh, BDMs and just putting all your big rocks, high dollar productive value tasks into that one big task block and just smash. It could be, you might even just get it all done in a day or something like that to the neglect of everything else. All right. Yeah. And that's what I think too with my stuff, my big rocks, writing articles, I've just got to put aside a big slab. Yeah. I, I like that because when I think about, um, you know, going to work in the morning as a, a, a BDM, you know, and then you, okay, we didn't have the luxuries of checking our emails quickly on the phone while we're having coffee at breakfast just to, to get your head. That transition now can start while you're having breakfast in the morning before you get to the office, right? But I remember I used to open the emails. I would I'd group them. I, I would group them in the categories. These ones here, here's the new business, um, any leasing if they needed help or owner's feedback or whatever. And then I, I would put them in those, in, you know. But So my transition was getting the emails prepared into their blocks, into their blocks of importance, you know. Uh, look, it, it's no different from the pandemic, right? The world didn't know how to transition into it. We kept on waiting on the news, the media, and it, it took a good six to nine months before the world got understood it all and, and then started putting things in place. Correct. You know, so it's that, that period of time. That, that occurs. It's yeah. Period, isn't it? So we just mm. got to be aware of these things. Um, so, okay. So just in summary, we've talked about identifying your high dollar productive task as opposed to your low end grind swamp work, whatever you want to call it. Uh, number two is, um, is then understanding produ productive procrastination and deliberate neglect of certain tasks, knowing that there are, will be consequences, but you've already weighed up the cost involved and mm. it's, far more productive to be focusing on the big stuff, the dollar productive um, at the detriment of those other smaller low value things. All right, next we talked about blocking times is having slabs of time for the big rocks, all right? So you're just putting in so much focus and value on punching out all of that because that's the stuff that's going to get you those extra five or 10 properties a month or doors a month that you're seeking is by putting all of that high value stuff into the time blocks. Now, next is going back to those step one where we put those low value tasks, understanding that there's still going to be some tasks there that only you can do. Now, whether you've got employing someone to go out and putting flies in the letterboxes or yep. Dennis, you talk about United States with door doorknob hangers. Yep. But, um, you know, th there are likely are some things that cannot be parted with. But if you can, uh, they don't have to be done by you. Now, be very careful. Don't think that only you can do every task. You can adequately use in screen recording technology, all of those sort of things. You can, you can actually record how a task is done. Now you've got to look at delegating. So before we get into that, Dennis, for every new property comes on board, 
what is it worth dollar wise to a company? So how much fee income on average would the typical property bring in for the company per year in property? Well, well I would like to think that it's a minimum $1,500 a year. Dan. At least. I, I think, mm. goodness, they really even shouldn't be business if all of their fees account to $1,500 a year. So let's say $2,000, yeah. all right? Yeah. As you know, we train with fee maximization experts. We train people up to that $3,000 in total fee income mm. per property per year. But let's say it's $2,000. And how many years on average are we going to keep that management in the company, do you think, Dennis? Oh, look, it, it's, a tricky situ it's a tricky question to ask, right? Um, you know, I, I would like to think that you, you'd be looking at a five-year cycle. I think five years is, yeah. is pretty typical. If I ask that question to a bunch of property managers, they'll all agree it's about five years. All mm. right, so that's already 10 grand in fees. Now, if that property was sold by the salespeople, if you've got salespeople in your real estate company, well, what's the commissions, Dennis, a salesperson can bring into the business? What, well, what's a property look, worth? For keepsake, let's say 10000 right? It could yeah, be a little bit less, but it could be also a lot more. It could be a lot more. <laughs> property is a lot more, particularly in the, in the East Coast cities and mm, stuff like mm. that. So let's say it's now worth 20000 or the rent roll is sold, what's that listing worth? It could be three to 5,000. So let's say it's anywhere between 13,000 to $20,000. And let's say you're right. going to go and find an extra five properties a month. So now we're saying your work and your productive work that you're doing could be worth anywhere between 50 to $100,000 a month extra to the business. You're getting where I'm going here, people, because mm -hmm. you're still doing your low-end swamp work because your office can't afford to employ you, a virtual assistant, to do that swamp work for you. There is a problem, all right? And now we're not serious about getting those extra five or 10 properties a month because to get up to that high-flying stage, you can't be doing swamp work that can be done by somebody else. Now, of course, with virtual assistants, uh, we can help you there. Speak with Michael. Just go to teamsbydesign.com. Go to a contact us. Michael will be in contact or someone be in contact. Talk to you about a, a, a virtual assistant that can do your BDM admin work. You really do it. Because if it's going to cost you two, two and a half grand a month, and, and, and if you don't put on a virtual assistant, it could cost you 30 a month. In, in work you couldn't do or business you couldn't bring in. Can you see where I'm going here? Let's mm. look at this from a business point of view and money out and money in, all righty? And let's just work smart here, people. If you're serious about growing your rent roll, is that a good point there, Dennis? Oh, I think it's a very good point. I think it, it's you're quite clear on that one there. Um, it, it's a, I suppose one of the things that come to mind for me, this, this has taken it back one step that you're talking about the blocks. If I'm in the office, Darren, as a BDM, and I've allocated two hours of, of you know, um, you know, prospecting, calling those potential, um, you know, inquiries, doing follow-ups, whatever I'm doing, and a new landlord inquiry comes in, as a coach, I'm like, take that call. So I'd be telling reception, I'd be telling front of house, I'd be telling whoever in the office that, um, I'm, a, I'm a do not disturb unless it's new business. Unless this comes in. So you just got to go through the unlesses. You got yeah, to go because that could be a return of the call that you've just left that if right. you started prospecting 45 minutes ago and they're calling you back, but right. they, they missed the mobile number or cell number and they're calling the office, right? So, you know, it's, it's really important that, um, you know, you've got those rules set in those block times. But you know, Darren, sometimes you may get an owner that, you know, you know, from 10 o'clock till 12 o'clock, you're doing prospecting. 9.30, someone rings up, says, I've got five properties, six properties, I'm free in half an hour. That's now eating into that two hours of prospecting time. Yeah. As a block, you're not allowed to agree on that time as far as I'm concerned, unless you can shift it to another block. Sometimes we're moving our director's meeting. You don't get off the phone until we've allocated a new time. That's how prospecting with blocks is as well. Correct. Correct. You are right. I, said we, mm. we, I just won't allow a zero result. We've got to no. 
postpone it. So, yep. all right, moving on. Now, the last key I've got here, Dennis, we've got to remove distractions. We have to be brutal on this. And I remember seeing a video once. Of a sorry, sorry, Darren, I've just got to reply this text message I've received. <laughs> <laughs> or it's, you know, tell, me, tell me, you know, you're going to come and have, give to me what's called water cooler talk and talk about, you know, or ladies want to talk about their spray tans and, mm -hmm. and whatever, you know, happened on the weekend. We've got to remove ourselves from that environment if we're yep. going to be putting, having a time block where we're just doing only the dollar productive tasks because we know that's the only thing that's going to bring you business and, and build it. The whole thing, Dennis, build the pipeline. We've got yep, to yep. build the pipeline and keep on yep. stoking it and stoking it because then the new business just falls out at a rapid rate. Any yeah, BDM yep. or salesperson understands the uh, how the pipeline works. But we've got to remove distraction. I remember seeing a, a video once of a high-end salesperson sitting in an office. There was a do not disturb sign on the door. Do not disturb prospecting just like it was you're in a studio and you got on air, which means you cannot walk in under any circumstances and Great so point. you need to think what environment have you got in the office where can you do your time blocks can you go and lock yourself away or you should be able to as a bdm jump in your car go do your calls in your car or can you go home but you've got to get into an environment where there is no distraction now having said that that's controlling outside distractions all right so we can just focus on the dollar productive tasks in our big time block. Mm. Now there's other distractions that come, Dennis, and it's the phone. And I'm going to say it, you know what I'm going to say, is that we've got to switch off the ding-dongs and the bing-bongs and the dong-dongs and all of those sort of things that will distract us away and take our focus of what we're doing. Because don't forget, Dennis, the danger of task transition. Yeah, it kicks that in again. It, it kicks out, it kicks in. Mm. We're fooling ourselves to think that it, we can't just switch back onto a task in the first second. It takes. No, that's right. Yeah. Darren, uh, on those distractions, um, funny story here. As as um, Integrity Real Estate was growing, uh, we had our section for property management with there was enough room for four property managers to be in there. So all of a sudden, the BDM got pushed out, and I was I was I had a desk all the way up the back of the office where the um, bathroom was, right, the toilet, and there was a desk there. So every single time someone went to the toilet, what happened? Yeah. They, everyone wanted to say hello to them. Doing a chat. Yeah, correct. <laughs> it's a very bad place to get tasks they, up. Very, very they bad. All, and, but Dennis is a butterfly, a social butterfly. He was happy to, and then he'd realise, hang on a minute, after like a few days, I realised this is bad. So I then went and blocked, locked myself in the in the front room where all the sign-ups were done, lease signings, et cetera, yeah. landlord meetings, yeah. sales meetings. And how I did it, they had a door that opened out. I used to sit behind it. So they'd poke their head in and see I wasn't in there, but I was actually behind the door. <laughs> so, so whether it's in an office, whether it's in your car or if you can go home, but you've got to control your environment, all righty? Yeah. So you just bang out that slab of work. And it is now self-discipline. It's over to you. You are your best best friend or your worst enemy when it comes mm. to this um and uh you know this is what high powered top gun bdms do um and they're very focused on that yeah now can i um add to so those are the bings and the bongs darren i mean google chrome or um apple or whatever apps that you've got on your your laptops and your, your computers they can be very distracting i do not have the social media notifications on i don't have linkedin on i don't have any of those little i've got the add-ons there right but i don't allow them to talk to me I, th know? I think it's very important because whenever we download something new to our computer it automatically um it opts you in to mm. notifications and it's not an automatic opt out and i i get very angry because suddenly i've downloaded a new program remember when i downloaded slack every conversation that happened in Slack would yep. send me off some noise and I was getting angry like I didn't ask for this and I was seeking this out and I realised I had to mute every conversation, conversation that was happening. And so you've got to be aware that these apps are out to distract you because that's how they get you coming back. 
You mm. don't need to be um, distracted with Instagram. Um, and there are certain things, Dennis, you don't need to have on your laptop and your phone. You can get, I, I don't have WhatsApp on my computer because I've got it on my phone. And so mm. I've decided there's certain uh, apps that I have on my computer and anything else gets stripped out, it's not needed, and I just got them on my phone. And the only thing, there's only one banner pop-up, Dennis, that I allow, and that's my next meeting. That's 10 minutes away or five minutes away, and it gives me a drop-down to click on the link for the next Zoom appointment. That's yeah. the only banner yeah. that I want, and I want nothing else. So, 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 so there's diligence that's really involved in this as well, right? Because social media sucks you in when you get, you know, pe people can look at the likes, they look look at the comments and the endorphins start running or whether it's the, the videos on TikTok, whatever it is, you know, that, you, that you're doing. And it, it, it can be tempting if you're starting to feel a little bit of a struggle and you may have got four or five no's if you're doing prospecting, you, you go to what makes you happy. Correct. Yeah, You've got to be diligent. I, I turn my phone upside down. I have it on silent. I don't have it on vibrate. Yep. So there's no buzz buzz. I don't have the flash on the, okay. Um, for those that are watching this on YouTube, because um, our podcast on YouTube as well, I'm holding my phone up and the iPhone has the little flash and it flashes at you if there's a notification. Yeah. I have it all off. All silent. Yeah, all off. It's really important. If you were to go on a date, you know, with your partner or your future partner, do you have the bings and the bongs on? Do you have the phone on? You're turning everything off because you're giving that person 100%, right? A listing appointment, Dennis. So the listing appointment, you've got everything switched off. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it applies to this work because it's just absolutely. as important as a listing appointment, right? It's yeah, just... well, that's what I'm saying. If it's a new, if it's your your partner, someone that you've got all, you, you, you spend a lot of love for or, or, or if it's for your personal care you do it so it's the same for prospecting it's the same for new business it's that importance yeah. it's, it's top of it it's got to be at the top so it really takes a lot of diligence um to be able to do that you know and that motivation so darren awesome tips um it, it, it's a good podcast but dennis before we finish talk about mm. your book talk about the book um there yeah, the pm uh lead secrets the lead secrets book it's um it, it, it look I, I i've been um getting lots of people actually message me i had a meeting with someone yesterday um that i've um, got the book i i was dealing with some um new business inquiries that they've read the book one lady's read it four times right, right? and she said dennis i'm going to read it six more times and then you're going to be my coach that's well, how much value i'm, I'm getting out of car. i didn't you doing some training with them and and the book is there with the little flag with those ticket notes she's studying the whole thing and pulling yeah. it apart well, wow i was just uh, really blown away that i mean it, i mean it is a, it is your best teaching on generating leads mm. and, and it is free if you want the book um, just go to pmleadsecrets.com that's pmleadsecrets.com it is free all we ask you to pay for shipping of $9.97 we'll get it out to you it's certainly the best work that Dennis has ever done. I oversaw the project and I pushed Dennis <laughs> through all the time management to get the darn thing let, done. Let, that you did. Let, let's clarify the 997s within Australia. So there's internationals a little bit more depending on your country. But, you know, yeah. get, that's going to be 20 bucks to get it around the planet. Um, that's pretty good. We do lose money. I mean, it does cost us more, but we want to get it into your hand. Um, so uh, um, well done. So Dennis, I think we're done. Yeah, yeah. Um, really appreciate the time. I think we've covered some really, really good stuff um, there for people. Uh, I can see why that the time management session that you do for property managers is um, is a one of the, if not the most sought after session. You know, because there's so many bings and bongs that get in the way more now than what there was when I'd first heard you do this session, you know, five years ago, six years ago, or whatever it was. So it, it's a brilliant session. Um, again, I still stand by if new business comes in, drop everything and go. But when you're prospecting and you're trying to get into that rhythm and that groove, it's really important to have that time management. And um, a, a tip, if you are ever running late or if you know you're not going to make it on time, don't turn up late. Call the office. Get someone in your office to, to call the client and let them know that you um, your last meeting just went over and you're just going to be a few minutes late or send the client a call yourself, right, and do it. I used to get the office to give them a call because it was that perception of a big company that they were dealing with as well. 
So um, always let your people know that if, you're, if you are going to be running late. Well, well done. Thank you, Dennis. I've enjoyed that. I always love teaching time management. And, uh, and of course, everybody, all of our time management training that I've done is all recorded and in the IGT exclusive membership as well. Just go to uh, inspiredgrowthtraining.com for more information there. But we've got all the time management training there for property managers. And uh, Dennis, um, well done. Yeah, uh, mate, thank you, Darren. I never thought that I would have been doing a podcast on time management. Awesome having Mr. Darren Hunter, the time management trainer king. All right, mate, well done. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Take care.